the supermarket and you bump into ingredients that you've never seen before and likely you've never tasted before. I thought it might be a fun focus for this lesson to gather up some of those ingredients, some of those anomalies, and bring them into our kitchen and cook up some new dishes. That way we'll keep our repertoire of recipes ever expanding and we'll keep it fresh in the kitchen. So here's what I've gathered up. We've got some cactus paddles, nopales, that show up uh, at least here in California in a lot of the groceries, but especially the Hispanic groceries. Uh, here is a weed that grows in my garden. It's called purslane, and uh, in Mexico they call it verdolagas. Uh, I have a tuber. This is yuca, very popular in South America and Central America throughout the Caribbean, and it makes its way to the market here. I've got some fig leaves right from a fig tree just outside the door. And then finally, of all the winter squash, this is maybe the most curious. This is the spaghetti squash. And when you cook it, the flesh falls apart into thin strands that look for all the world just like spaghetti. Let's get started here. We're gonna start with the spaghetti squash. Now, I wanna cook this, and when it's cooked, I'll shred it into fibers, and we're gonna make a Southeast Asian salad with chicken and fruit and a really spicy dressing. So first order of business is to cut this squash in half. Once I've cut it in half, if there's any seeds, or loose fibers, I'm gonna scrape those out, much the way you might clean a pumpkin if you were making a jack-o'-lantern. And we'll put that into a pot of boiling salted water. And it will take about four to six minutes to get tender. At home, if you've got a microwave, I know a lot of chefs who just pop it into the microwave set it on three minutes and then come and check it. If it's not tender, they give it another minute or two and uh, they swear by it as a technique. So there's another option. And while our squash is getting tender, let's go ahead and start to build a salad. I'm gonna make a dressing and the dressing includes fish sauce, and in the Southeast Asian recipe, typically when you see fish sauce, you'll see also lime juice and sugar. The sugar and the fish sauce complement one another because fish sauce is very salty. And so you add sugar to the fish sauce until you achieve a balance between sweetness and saltiness. And by that balance, I mean you can notice both of those tastes, but neither predominates, okay? It might surprise you how much sugar it takes to make that happen. We've got a lot of vegetable matter, a lot of fruit going in, so we need a really assertive dressing. No need to add salt and pepper, why? Because there's plenty of salt already in the fish sauce. And for pepper's sake, I'm gonna to go to my refrigerator and see what I've got in terms of chili paste. Uh, this is a Thai chili sauce. It's a sweetened chili sauce. And I'm gonna add that just to bring a little fire to bear. Okay, so what's gonna go into our salad? Well, I've got some grapes here and I've taken them. They're seedless grapes, two colors, red and green. And I've cut some in half, and those are going to go into the dressing. I have an apple, and I'm going to cut the flesh away from the core. Send that to the compost heap, and we'll dice this up. And so that it doesn't darken, we're gonna put that right into the dressing as well. Next, I've got a chicken breast. 
And this chicken breast was poached, but if you had leftover roasted chicken breast, that would be appropriate as well. And what I want to do is cut this into smaller pieces. And then sort of shred it. I don't want to cut it into a little dice. I think that looks a little too predictable. So we'll shred it like this. It'll give a, a nice rustic look to our, our salad. And it doesn't take that much longer. Over here, the pot has come to a boil. And give the spaghetti squash a minute or two to start cooking. And then monitor its progress. You don't want it to get too soft. Uh, better that it should be a little undercooked than overcooked. Chicken right into the dressing. I'm just going to toss it so that it can absorb some of that flavor. And let's look in on our squash. I'm going to pull it out here and just begin to scratch away at it a little bit. You can see that it's starting to get tender and it's starting to pull away into fibers like that. It's not quite done yet, but it's close. So we'll carry on. I'm going to add scallions to my salad. And maybe I'll save some of the green tops to go on after the fact, and we'll put these right in the dressing. Peanuts, I'm going to chop those as well. I'm not going to add these because I want them to stay nice and crisp. So we'll put them onto our salad just before we serve it. Let's check in on our squash. And if you notice, as I scratch away at it, it falls apart into these filaments. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to turn the pot off, and I'm going to rescue this from the hot water. And because it's hot, I'll just wrap it in a towel. And let's go ahead and scratch this from the shell. Now, certainly you don't have to do this while it's as hot as, as mine is. I want to move things along here. But you could let it cool on the countertop for just a second. And what I want to do with that squash is just put it into a big bowl of ice water and cool it down and rinse off any of the starch that's on the outside. And so once it's cool and rinsed, I'm going to spin it in a salad spinner. And these shreds, I'll leave behind. What I'd like to do is add some of the spaghetti squash right to my salad. I'm going to toss this all together and make sure that Everything is coated well with the dressing. A quick taste. Splash more lime juice, and I'm pretty happy with the flavor. Now, Southeast Asia, Vietnam especially, is known for being a cuisine of fresh herbs. And so I've got some herbs right here. I've been soaking them in ice water so they're nice and fresh. And I'm going to take them out. This is a great way of reviving herbs that may have gotten a little tired in your refrigerator. And what I have here is a couple of different things. I have mint. 
I have cilantro, and I have Thai basil. And I'm going to take the mint from the stems. Maybe I'll save that for garnish. We'll collect this together, and I'm going to slice it into sort of big pieces. I think people expect a pretty robust dish, and they want to be able to taste all these different herbs. So this is something more than just a sprinkling of parsley. This is really a component of the dish. It's really going to be a big part of its flavor. Take those herbs, toss them into the salad, and then we're going to serve it while the herbs are nice and fresh and lively and aromatic. At this point, we can put peanuts into the salad. I'll put some more of these green onion tops. I'm going to take advantage of these grapes and just tuck them onto the same plate. We'll add some mint. And then garnish this with the green onions and the remainder of the peanuts. Okay, so there's a delicious Southeast Asian salad that features fruit, chicken, aromatic herbs, and spaghetti squash. If you've never used spaghetti squash before, this is a great introduction to what it can do in your kitchen. Now we're going to feature two things that you will find in the Mediterranean, but interestingly enough, you'll also find them here in California. I've got fig leaves on my left and purslane on my right. I'm going to wrap fish in fig leaves, and I'm making a salad to go with that fish with the purslane. So let's start with the fish. These are fig leaves, and I took them from the fig tree right outside the back door. What I want to do is pass them over an open flame just to soften them a little bit. I want them to uh, be soft enough that I can fold them around a piece of fish. Now, you might ask yourself why you would do that. And uh, there's one answer, and that is that the fig leaf would keep the fish from sticking to the grill, which is a great answer. But what you may not know is that fig leaves, when they heat, end up smelling a little bit like coconut, and they'll perfume the fish in the most delightful way. So I'm going to cut the hard stem from each of these fig leaves. And then I have a piece of fish here. And that fish, I'm going to put olive oil on. This is a nice extra virgin olive oil. Salt. And pepper. And then let's flip it over. And I'll season it on the other side as well. Now I would say if the fish is nice and fresh and we put it into a fig leaf with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, all we might need at the end is just a little lemon to squeeze over it and that would be enough. Okay. I'm going to bring this over and tuck it under. If these ribs are coarse to the point where they keep the, the leaf from folding, then just cut them out. And I think that is good. All right, here on the grill, a little oil. I'll just brush it around, and then there goes our fish. And 
I don't have to lose any sleep about the fish sticking to the grill because the fig leaf will prevent that. Next, we're going to make a salad. This salad is called fatouche and is from the Eastern Mediterranean. And I'm going to start out with a dressing that's pretty simple. The dressing has olive oil. The dressing has lemon juice. A little bit of garlic. And salt and pepper. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a new ingredient that you may not know. This is sumac. And in the Eastern Mediterranean, they have a religious prohibition against the consumption of alcohol. So with no alcohol, you don't have any vinegar. And you begin to look around for other things to make your food sour. Here is a seasoning, this powdered sumac, that has kind of a sour flavor. And it's very popular in the Eastern Mediterranean. We're going to add a little bit of that to our dressing as well. Now, in this dressing, we're going to put some of this purslane. Purslane, as I said, grows as a weed out here in California. But one of the things that distinguishes it, it's one of the few vegetable sources of omega-3 oils. So those are the oils that are so good for your heart that you get from wild seafood. I'm going to take, and we're just going to break these little snippets of purslane right into the dressing. They eat a little bit like a succulent, so they're, they're a little bit uh, uh, chewy, uh, juicy. They taste of citrus a little bit. And it won't hurt them at all to sit in this dressing for an hour or more. Let's look in on the fish real briefly. It looks fine. The leaf is starting to brown a little bit. And I'm just going to leave it. I can tell just by pressing it that the fish is still pretty soft. So it needs to do a little bit more cooking. In the same dressing, I'm going to add cucumbers, and they don't mind if they marinate for a while. I'm going to add yellow pepper, green onions, and then let me add some herbs. I've got parsley, a good deal of parsley, so think of it almost like a vegetable rather than an herb, and I'm going to leave it in big pieces, and we'll add that. And then here is some mint that I'm going to strip from the stems, and we'll add the mint to our salad as well. Now, if you were planning on serving this at dinner time, I would say you could do this uh, early in the afternoon. You know, it can sit around for three or four hours without too much difficulty. Probably in the refrigerator is best. And just coat it all with the flavorful dressing. Now, the other components that are going into this include tomatoes, but I don't usually add the tomatoes early on because sometimes they can fall apart. So shortly before I'm going to serve this salad, I will add the tomatoes. That looks pretty good to me. And then finally, this is a bread salad. So you're probably comfortable adding croutons to salad, but in Italy they make a salad called panzanella, which they actually put torn up bread in, and as the vegetables give off moisture, the bread absorbs it. Fatouche is a bread salad from the Eastern Mediterranean, and I'm gonna take pita bread that's been toasted a little bit, and then just tear it into pieces about an inch on a side. We'll add that right into our salad as well. We'll toss it and give it a chance just to sit so that the bread can soften and they can absorb 
the juice from the tomatoes. We are very close to being ready to serve this dish. Let me stir the bread and the tomatoes in here and let the juices from the tomatoes soften that bread. Just before I serve this, I'm going to add some arugula. This, I recognize, is a little bit more tender. So I'm going to add some arugula to the mix. And again, we'll toss it all together. Okay, and we'll take our fish from the grill, and what I want to do is cut into the wrapper so that I can open it up a little bit and display the fish that's inside. We'll move that to the center of the plate. A little fresh olive oil. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lemon that people can squeeze on to their own taste. So there you have it, a treat with Mediterranean flavors but ingredients that I can find right here in California, and likely with a little bit of looking, you can find them in your own neighborhood. So next I'd like to work with cactus paddles of all things. Uh, the Mexicans call them nopales. These were harvested up the road about four miles, but we see them in the Mexican groceries up and down California. And my guess, you'll find them in Mexican groceries across the country at different times of the year. The big challenge with cactus paddles is pretty obvious. They're covered with spines. So let me show you how to clean them. Uh, having a towel might not be a bad idea. And then a big knife and just glide over the top and cut those spines off. Every place you see one, just go back and capture it. And if you're worried that there might be a spine or two, you can always scrape anything that's residual off. We're gonna flip it over and do the same on the second side. Press your knife right down against the cactus paddle and just trim all those spines away. In the event that you missed any, scrape them. And then the ones that are really difficult to get to are the ones on the outside edge. And so what I typically do is I just trim all the way around the edge and just cut those spines off. And we'll take and throw that away. All right. So... I'm pretty confident that there's no spines left on here. And we need to cook these. Sometimes you'll see them roasted in a really hot oven or even broiled. Uh, other times I put them on the grill. Uh, I'm gonna grill them today. And just so that I don't have to handle a lot of different pieces, what I'm gonna do is cut this not all the way to the end in about half inch pieces so that when I'm done, I can still move it around, but it'll hold together. And yet, there'll be an opportunity for the, the slime that is indicative of, of uh, these cactus paddles and cactuses in general to, to um, be expressed and dissipate. Cactus paddles go on. and I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper after I flip it over. Now, 
While the cactus is cooking, I can go ahead and prepare the rest of this salad. This is a nopales salad, and I'm going to feature black beans and tomatoes, uh, chipotle peppers for a little bit of heat, some cotija cheese, which will give a nice salty uh, edge to the salad. And the dressing is going to start with red onions, and I soak them in a little bit of vinegar for about 10 minutes, and what happens is the color uh, sort of blossoms. It goes from looking like this to uh, looking a little bit electric. So let's go ahead and add the onions there. I'm going to add a little bit more acid in the form of lime juice. And then in goes some olive oil. And we'll season it with salt and a little bit of pepper. All right, now I want to flavor this with chipotle peppers. So let me get one out. There's a little bit more. These can be a little bit spicy, so just know what you're getting into. They're spicy and smoky, and they're going to make for a delicious, delicious dressing here. Now, we'll stir that all up. So let's see where we're at with the nopales. They're just starting to color a little bit. And this is kind of an important process because as I said, the slime that's the nature of cactus paddles will be driven out and it'll evaporate and this won't come across as slimy, it'll come across as a really flavorful vegetable. Just so that it cooks evenly, I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. Back to our salad. Now, I've got some black beans here. These are canned black beans. I bought them, but I took them out of the can and I rinsed them because sometimes the water surrounding black beans can make your salad a little murky looking. So rinse all the liquid off and just have the nice clean black beans. I'm going to also add some tomatoes that have been chopped up. And already it's a beautiful salad. We're going to add some cilantro to that salad. In it goes. And these vegetables can just be tossed together and they can macerate. Now let's wait for the cactus paddles to finish cooking. Okay, you can see that the cactus paddles have lost their bright green color and they've started to brown a little bit and that's exactly what I want. I'm going to cook them on the second side so they look exactly like this first side and then we can finish the salad up. All right, I think these cactus paddles have done. They've browned really nicely and a lot of the, the liquid has been driven off and evaporated. So let's take them to our cutting board. And what I'm going to do is cut them into half inch pieces straight across. We'll get rid of the hard stem end. And I'll do the same thing with the second one. And we'll toss this together. I don't think you're going to find a more colorful salad out there. I'm going to add some of the cotija cheese. This is an aged cheese, a little bit salty. It's a common ingredient to use in Nopales salads. Now, sometimes I serve this just the way it is. Uh, if I want to make more of a meal of it, I might lay a bed of this salad down and then slice an avocado across the top and serve it that way. But I've got an avocado here that what I'm going to do is just add avocado right to the salad itself. And oftentimes, I will take this salad and use it as a filling, sort of a vegetarian filling for a quesadilla. There 
There we are. Just a squeeze of lime juice. That avocado is very, very rich. There's a smokiness in this salad now that wasn't there before. And that's not just the chipotles, that's the grilled, the grilled nopales. So I went to the refrigerator and I found a little bit of lettuce. I've got red leaf and a little bit of romaine. And I'm just gonna line a platter with that. And then we're gonna spoon on our nopales and black bean salad. So there you have it, Nepalis salad. If you've never eaten a really spiky cactus before, today's your lucky day. So let's cook some yuca. I've got yuca right here. You don't see it in the markets very often. It's very popular in Central America and South America, even into the Caribbean, but it doesn't travel well, and so it doesn't make its way to the United States that often. When you do find it, it's almost always coated in wax like this, and what that does is it protects the root in transit. Uh, what we need to do is trim that wax off, and so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, it tends to be a little bit tough, so a big, strong, Chef's knife like this is the, is the tool of choice. And we'll just trim away that waxy outside. What I've discovered is because the flesh is so white, the chips come out a little bit pale. And so I began looking around for a way to sort of change that dynamic. And what I decided to do was to stain the chips with beet juice before I fried them. Let's go ahead and see if we can slice this. I want it sliced as thin as possible. I'm using a Japanese mandolin here. This is a great little tool to have on hand. Okay, set that aside. I'm gonna put one of these chips into the oil just to see how hot it is. Looks like we're in good shape there. Let me spread these out on a platter or a plate. And I have some beet juice. And what I've discovered is that you put a little bit on here, splash it on, and it fries up as though it weren't there, but they end up looking a little bit like rose petals when all is said and done. And in go our chips. So I think you can get a sense already from looking at these frying that the red color does stain them. And as they're frying, pay attention to the bubbling that's going on in the pan because that's indicative of the amount of water that's left in the vegetable. So as long as we've got bubbling going on, that means that there's water left in there and they won't really crisp up when they cool. But as the bubbling begins to subside, then you know that they'll be crisp when they're done, when they cool down. So as they stop bubbling, out they come. Let me bring these over and we're gonna season them with salt while they're still a little bit hot and warm and have a little bit of oil on the outside. And 
and a little bit more salt. So there you are, yuca chips. I think this is the perfect snack to go along with a crisp white wine or even a glass of sparkling wine. The next time you see yuca in the market, consider picking it up and frying some chips of your own. And if you just happen to have some beet juice on hand, well, cheers to you.